Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today what we're going to do is we're going to install a hot water air expansion tank in a residential home. So this is my home and the house is uh, 38 years old or so and the uh, house never came with an air expansion tank so I have to install one from scratch so it's not like a replacement. And um, on this particular house, the, uh, the PRV, the pressure reducing valve that uh, has the water entering the house, I know that particular valve is shot and I um, need to uh, replace that or rebuild it. I'm going to end up replacing it rather than rebuild it because I want to go all brand new. So I'm, I've got parts on order for that. So, um, so with my PRV, the way that it should work is that uh, the incoming street pressure is about let's just say 105 psi and then it comes in it goes through the uh, PRV and then it should enter into the house at about 65 psi on my house when you uh, uh, like uh, I'll I can do a demonstration where I'll operate a toilet and you'll see that after the regulator it's a 60 psi and then once the toilet shuts off or the or if the sink or whatever the whatever the water um, faucet is that's utilizing the water shuts off and then you go to a static condition then the uh, resting uh, static pressure comes up to about 105 psi which is about street pressure that's because my PRV is shot I know it I need to replace it um, working on that but uh, at the same point in time I'm looking at the whole house as a whole so I want to, uh, I've got the parts that were readily in stock to do the air expansion tank. So I want to take care of that right now. Let me show you the parts right here, but I got the, uh, the setup behind me and I'll show you everything right now. Okay, so here I got a temporary workbench going on here. So a couple of saw horses and an old door so I can work out here in the garage. Now here's my hot water heater and it is a 50 gallon and it was installed in 2002 to 2004 I'm not sure the installation date they didn't write it down I'm just guessing of that based off the date of manufacture this hot water heater is 14 15 years old so I know it's past due but it still works good it doesn't leak I changed out the uh, anode rod in 2015 should probably change it out again because uh, that's cheap money compared to the price of a brand new hot water heater. Um, okay, here's the tank for my that I'm going to use, and here's the box that it came in. So it's a Watts. There's the model number right there. Got it at the Home Depot for about sixty-three dollars plus tax out the door, and this particular one is rated for a 50 gallon hot water tank so um, I'm getting this based off of the size of my hot water heater okay on the back side of the tank you've got a sticker here that gives you some information about it okay so it gives you the model number it tells you what it's pre-charged with is 40 psi the maximum air charge for this is 80 psi and the maximum working pressure on this is 150. Now there's a uh, blue hose here in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, unscrew that, and then use my tire pressure gauge that you use for bicycle tires. Put that on there. Hang on. Okay, so then I'm going to take my tire pressure gauge, put it on here. And then I can see how much pressure is in the tank. And then when I read that, it reads out at 38 psi. So it's come, it has 38 psi in here. Now, on my particular tank, it's got, um, you're supposed to put this pressure based upon your incoming water pressure. Now, I, like I told you earlier in the video, my PRV is shot, so my resting static is coming up to 105. But when the system is in drawer, it's drawing, uh, it's uh, regulating in at about 60 psi. So I'm going to put mine, uh, my pressure here at 60. I can go up to 80 comfortably, uh, so 60 is not a problem. I'm still 20 psi below the maximum air pressure allowed from the manufacturer. Now, 
we should also maybe explain why in the world I'm even installing this whole thing, in case you don't know why. The reason why you want to even install one of these air expansion tanks, they call this one a potable water expansion tank, okay? And the reason why you want to install one is because of thermal expansion. What is thermal expansion? Okay. When you have the, the water system of the house, and you go from the street into your house through the pressure reducing valve, then at that point in time, the pressure reducing valve is going to prevent the water from going back out to the street, like, uh, like a check valve or something of this nature, so it, it becomes a, a closed circuit. So then, when you're in the residence and you're using the hot and cold water and you're depleting the hot water out of the tank, and then what happens is, is you shut off your faucets and, and you're back to a static condition and then your hot water heater, in my particular case it's a natural gas hot water heater, uh, senses that the temperature of the hot water tank is low, so it's going to turn on the flame in order to get that um, tank temperature up to whatever you got it set at at the thermostat. Now in my particular case I have it set to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So when that water, let's say it goes to 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then the, the, uh, therm the, the uh, hot water heater, uh, and I'll just spin this around so you can see the hot water heater behind me. So then the hot water heater right there, what it does is it's saying, okay, I need to, uh, I need to come on. So then it comes on and then because it can't go back, the, the water can't go back out to the street because it's a closed system, then it, it uh, well, it can, uh, but only after the pressure builds up to the same pressure as your steep street pressure, which in my case is 105 PSI. That's because my PRV, even though the regulating capability doesn't work properly, the thermal expansion bypass, which is built in on my particular pressure reducing valve, is working properly. So you have to know uh, a little bit about your uh, pressure reducing valve to know that it's performing actually two functions. It's performing the function of reducing the pressure coming into your house and also if you don't have a, a, an air expansion tank like the one that I'm going to install and you have a closed circuit and you, and you have thermal expansion because your hot water heater is kicked on, well now it allows that extra pressure to bleed off before the, uh, the um, pressure re uh, relief valve, which is a, on my particular case, it's at the top of the uh, hot water heater. The discharge pipe is, is right here. You can see that discharge pipe right there. And then that's just going to discharge onto the floor. So in my case, I don't have that happening because my valve, I think it's set at 150 PSI. I have to double check it, I don't have it memorized. But whatever it is, it's higher than 105 or 109 PSI, which is the incoming street pressure before the thermal ex expansion bypass uh, feature of my pressure reducing valve comes into play when I have thermal expansion. So ultimately, what I'm, this, is, this is how the house is going to operate after everything is the way that it's supposed to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the pressure reducing valve replaced and I'm going to install the air expansion tank. So this way when you utilize the water within the house, uh, the pressure is going to maintain itself at about 60 to 65 psi. Then when you shut off the faucets and then you um, and then the hot water heater here um, uh, brings the flame on and to bring the tank back up to 120 psi, the air expansion tank is going to take that thermal expansion and it's going to keep the pressure theoretically at about the same 60 65 psi so the pressure doesn't have to come all the way up so that the thermal bypass feature on the pressure reducing valve doesn't even need to come into play because all the thermal expansion is being taken care of in the air expansion tank that I'm going to install right now. So that is the whole purpose of why I'm installing it, how it's supposed to, to operate, and that and, and just by me doing the air expansion tank today is not going to solve 
all of my problems because I still have a pressure reducing valve that is not working properly. So you have to look at the water system as a whole to determine exactly what's going on. Uh, I will have another video uh, when I change out the pressure reducing valve and show you all that. But for right now, this vi particular video is just going to be focusing on installing the air expansion tank. Okay, so here's the air expansion tank again. You see that I purchased many different hoses right there. I also um, got uh, other various plumbing parts on exactly how I'm going to, to do my system. I'm going to have a combination of soldering as well as threaded connections. So I've got everything I need in order to do that. I've got some uh, Teflon um, some pipe thread sealant here that I've got. I've also got Teflon tape uh, right there, a couple of rolls of Teflon tape. Plus I got all the material in order to solder. I've got my map gas, I've got solder, and I've got a container of flux right there. So I'm good to go with all that stuff. And, and I'm also got a couple of valves here with bleed ports. You can see the bleed ports right there. So this way I can bleed the pressure off of the system uh, w when, I, uh, when I go to put these valves in. Now, so my first connection here is a T. Let me show you that. Alright, so here's the top of the hot water heater. And you can see the pressure relief valve right here. And it just comes out here and it just discharges to the floor within six inches of the uh, floor. Uh, this valve, let's see if I can figure out the rating on it. Uh, I have to look at the top of that thing to figure it out. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get you that pressure in a second. Hold on. Alright, so there's the pressure right there. You can see that it's 150 psi set at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So I was right, it's 150 psi. And luckily, my thermal expansion is not activating this be, uh, because I have a thermal expansion bypass in the pressure reducing valve. Now, let me go back to my installation. You want to, okay, so looking at the top of the tank, you've got blue, which is cold, you can read that right there, and you've got hot, which is the red one, right there. You want to install the expansion tank on the cold water side. So I want to, I want to leave this valve in place, although it is an older gate style valve uh, I don't want to change it out. So what I've got here is I've got uh, a sweat to thread mail connection. What I want to do is I want to unsweat that and I want to put this T on. And then I'm, I'm either going to put Copper the T on like to come up here to the ceiling and then I want it to come across, have a ball valve right there and then come across here, have, have a strap and then have the tank hang right about here coming down and I've already marked my studs I've got some magnets here so I can determine exactly where the studs are so I've look I've marked those with blue tape so I know I've got the the uh, the uh, joists the ceiling joists are running that way and that way so uh, that's one thing I'm also what I'm gonna do now even though I don't need to do this what I'm gonna do is on the hot water side what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this, break this connection here, and I'm going to install a, hot, a valve here. So this way I can shut this valve off, shut this valve off, and leave the water on to the house. For right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the water to the house in, in, in an effort to... Um, bleed this pressure out of here so I can get that valve installed so this way I can work without any problems uh, and leave the water onto the house so that sinks and toilets and all that work so so I'm doing a couple things while I'm into this project I'm gonna put a new valve here on the hot water side and then plus put the air expansion tank in over here okay so I've, so I've got that planned out and I've got all the stuff I need in order to do it I've got my copper plus all the tools. This is my threaded three-quarter inch valve here which is going to go on the hot water side. 
I have a bleed screw here I can put that on the hot water tank side when I go to do my installation and on this valve here I've got a sweated in valve three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna put that in like this so this way it goes to, this uh, bleed valve goes towards the tank so this way I can shut off the valve bleed the pressure off and then check the uh, tank pressure when I do maintenance on it oh that's another thing so we do want to adjust this pressure right here uh, let me take you outside to show you the house pressure alright so here is my water station outside here's the P, the pressure reducing valve right there that is not working properly I'm going to end up replacing that and I'm gonna repipe this whole thing so it's gonna be completely different again separate video stay tuned for that subscribe to my channel and you'll get the, the heads up when that video comes out like I said I got parts on order now here's the pressure right now come on camera uh, I don't think the camera's doing its job. I'm trying to get you the best zoom on that, but right now that says about, let's just say 105 PSI. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flush a toilet and then I'll show you what the pressure is. Okay, so I have water running through the system now. The pressure on that, although the camera's a little difficult to pick it up, is about 60, just under 60 PSI. We'll call it 58 PSI. Then when the toilet shuts off, what's going to happen is is that seat no not the seat but that pressure on the gauge is going to come up to about no 105 psi and that again is because my pressure reducing valve isn't is not properly regulating the pressure because it's shot the the the, the seats and everything inside of here are shot i can even hear the water slightly flowing through here and See if we can just catch it when the uh, toilet shuts off. There it is. And now you can see the pressure building up. And now we're just going past 100. And it's going to settle out. It's somewhere around 105. Okay, now we know that that tank pressure is about 38 PSI. I want to bring it up to about 60 PSI. I could use a bicycle tire pump, but. I have a nice uh, fancy air compressor here so I just juiced it up so I don't have to mess around with that. So now what I want to do is just take my, my air here and just pump this thing up to about 60 psi and let's see what we got here. Actually, this thing only goes up to 50. Um, so let me just bring it up to uh, at least 50. Forty psi. Forty-seven psi. All right, that's fifty psi right there. All right, so I'll just throw that back on cap. So I'm good to go on my air pressure. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my hot water thermostat. I'm going to put that on vacation mode so that the tank does not come on. Uh, now I want to go outside and shut the uh, water off. Okay, so the water in this house comes up this way. So what I'm going to do, this is the main valve, which is an old gate valve. I'm going to change that out to a ball valve when I do my reconfiguration here. So I'm going to shut that off here. Let me shut this off remove this gauge tap that I had on there for pressure, open this up, and I want to lead the pressure off inside the house. Now I'm going to go and open up a valve on the second level so I can further bleed that out. Alright, I opened up a couple of faucets on the second level plus the first level. So you can see it's kind of, it's uh, 
pretty much I'm just going to leave this open here but you can see how it's kind of gurgling so I just want to get that pressure so the pressure is off the system now 100 percent let me go inside and start working alright first thing I want to do is I'm going to close off this valve here and what I want to do is I want to get this valve installed on the hot water side so I can work without any issue okay so that valve is off and it's tight and I'm good to go there now I'm going to crack open this valve here and see if I can get this hot water valve installed over here so let me let me get in on that right now see if I can do that so that you can see it at the same time okay so this here is the valve that I want to install I'm going to install it so that the bleed port is going towards the hot water heater so this is going to go into the male pipe that way I've got a close nipple right here that is going to go uh, so that, that that flexible hose connection can go on this end right here so first joint that I want to make up is this joint right here now the way that I like to do these joints you could just use temp the, uh, the uh, pipe thread sealant or you could just use four wraps of that actually because I don't want any leaks I'm going to actually use both so what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat my uh, threads with some pipe thread sealant and I'm going to get that on there and then I'm going to wrap it with the Teflon tape so I'm actually going to use both products in order to seal because this will give me the best chance of not having a leak after everything is said and done alright there we go and let me make sure I've got a uh, rag here and when you put the uh, tape on you have to make sure you put it on the proper way so this way when you thread it in it doesn't unthread on you alright so that's one wrap two three four there's four wraps there I'm gonna stop right there put that on like this I'm going to tighten that up. Okay, there's that hot water line right there, wrapped with the Teflon, uh, the pipe thread sealant, four wraps of Teflon tape. Now I'm going to take my valve, put that on. I'm going to put the camera down so I can do a double wrench technique. But basically I'm going to screw this valve on. I've got the bleed port here on this, on the hot water tank side. So this way when I shut the valve off I can bleed the pressure off from, open up some air. So if I want to, you know, bring, take the, the, the pressure out of the tank, I can do so just by opening up that bleed valve. So uh, I'm going to put the camera down and take care of that. Okay, I was able to get that valve installed. And then I connect it on the uh, copper flex line by just bringing it and just adjusting it back this way. I broke this line. That valve is closed. That valve is closed. I'm going to turn the water on to the house. If that valve is still in good condition, then I won't get any water coming back at me. So uh, I'm going to do that right now to see if I can get the water back onto the house. And then. I just have to work here and I, have to, I don't have to worry about the rest of the house. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, the water is on, no leaks. The next step is to unsweat that connection so I can sweat on a T. So, let's get to it. Now, you know, 
know what? One thing I want to do is I want to make sure this valve doesn't get too hot in here. I'm just going to throw a wet rag on that valve. Let me do that right now. Right, so I got a wet rag from a bucket nearby. And I'm just going to soak it here just to keep the heat concentrated here. I just want this off. I don't want to disturb that solder joint there. So that's my game plan. That's what I'm going to do. Let's uh, see if I can do it. Uh, male connection off that I wanted to get off and just cleaning the joint while it's nice and hot. I'm going to let that sit for a second and then what I'll do so I got this wet rag here let me pull this off put it around there and make sure that that's cool alright now I gotta get a T in on here. All right, so basically the rest of this is gonna be just kind of soldering, soldering in it, soldering in all the piping and stuff needed. So rather than it's just standard soldering techniques is basically what I'm gonna do, but uh, I'll, I'll rather than show you each connection, I'll just kind of do the job and kind of show you the components afterwards. But you kind of get a gist of, you know, uh, so far where I'm at in this project. Okay. Okay, I got a few of the joints um, soldered in. So there at the end I got that all soldered in. I got the saddle anchor. I decided to do it uh, right there so the tank is obviously going to go right there. Uh, I got a little bit more soldering to do and I'll show you that right now uh, as I am ready to solder my joints. Right, I'll start with this top one here and let's see how well I can get this done.
And then my last joint right there. And I should be done. All I have to do is let this dry out. Okay. All the joints should be good. I got a damp rag here. Try to quench this out just a little bit, not too, too strongly. All right, so here's the final product, all soldered in. And I gotta do a water test, leak check now. Let's go ahead and open up the cold water supply, see if I have any leaks. Who knows what we're gonna find? Never know. Okay, I don't see anything glaring at me so far. Putting that up all the way. Good pressure on that. Make sure everything is dry here. To wipe everything down when I'm done. Uh, I was able to reuse this hose and that hose. I didn't even need to, even though I bought a thousand hoses, I'll be returning every one of them. If I don't have a leak, we'll see how things go. Uh, I see a leak right there. All right, so I definitely want to tighten that one down. Let me uh, let me uh, double wrench that, and tighten that up. Uh, so I have one leak right there at that joint, that threaded joint. I'll get that in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, everything looks good here. Now on this particular one, because my pressure reducing valve is malfunctioning, and this, this isn't really going to be used for what it's supposed to be used for, which is thermal expansion, I'm going to shut that off. The reason why I wanted to get a valve with the bleed port is because now I can take this, I can open this up, I guess I'm going to get water everywhere, uh, but I can bleed the pressure off the system right here which is good without removing the tank and then I can check my air pressure right here and uh, the only thing is, is that I guess I'm just going to get water everywhere. I have to put some plastic over this or something just so that the water drips down to the floor. I didn't realize it was going to spray out like that but I'll, uh, I'll do that. I'll put some plastic there just to, just to do that. i got to clean this up a little bit. Alright, i got to tighten that joint and let's open up the hot. Alright, so far so good. Let me put the camera down. Let me get that tightened up, see if I can seal that. Dry this up a little bit, but I think I'm okay. Alright, so here's the final product. What I did was, is I wanted to bleed the pressure out of here, so I took this uh, plastic bag here, and I put it over here, and I opened up that bleed valve. But a lot, there's more water in the tank than I anticipated, and I don't need it to really be empty, so... I stopped, but you can see how much water I did get like on the floor and some of it even splashed up on the wall here. So um, so maybe the bleed valve is not the best way to get the pressure off the system. Maybe the best way for me to do it is to close this valve, close this valve here, put the, put the unit on vacation mode, then pop open the relief valve here discharge the pressure out of the the tank and the system and then it'll discharge right there at the floor level and then let it just come out onto the to the floor level and and come out i could use the uh, tank drain but my tank drain is uh is a piece of pos and so basically i put a note on it you know uh this valve does not shut tight and don't blow it down uh, because it'll leak and it's just a big pain in the butt. I had to put a cap on it so so I don't want to deal with that drain valve. Uh, what else? 
Okay, so that leak that I told you was leaking, I was able to tighten that up. I just had to get a little bit larger, a little bit more persuasion. I ended up using that uh, 12 inch adjustable right there with that uh, 8 inch crescent adjustable wrench rather and uh, those two wrenches combination was able to tighten up that one joint that was leaking. All my soldered joints look good. That was not, that was an old one there. I mean that's just it's nothing. Uh, and whenever I do a plumbing job I like to keep an eye on it for 24 hours uh, just in case something uh, comes up. Uh, but right now everything's looking a hundred percent sound. So for now I'm going to leave this off but normally you would do this to open this up so that your thermal expansion was here. It's just that my PRV valve is shot. Uh, so this thermal expansion isn't really going to come into play until I clean up my outside situation. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video. I hope that that was informative uh, about the reasons for wanting it, how to install it, and things of this nature. Um, I wish you luck with your own project. Uh, if you like this video, please click on like. Give me a little bit of love that way. You can uh, subscribe to my channel. I have uh, a lot of other videos, different subjects. And uh, that's it. I'll catch you on the flip side.